right, uh, we're going to move along and we're going to talk about uh, some of the bills and stuff that are out there. Uh, we have Dean Greenblatt that's going to address some of those questions and, and present for you. He's an attorney from Bloomfield Hills. He's counsel for Michigan Open Carry, a case that's involving the Capital Area District Library, which was a leading case on firearm preemption. The Clio Area School District, uh, which went all the way to the Supreme Court. Convention and Arena Authority also represented uh, representing Michigan gun owners. Besides firearm rights, the Dean practices in the areas of business litigation, criminal defense, and aviation law. He's also a part time professor of aviation law and an avid shooter, building a lot of things, and representing individuals and businesses with firearm issues for over 21 years. If you have any questions about that, I'm going to just talk to Dean. So let's give it for, up for Dean. Uh, Unnecessary in Michigan. 
There's already a mechanism that's available, and you can extend beyond firearms and ammunition to knives and nuclear bombs, anthrax, and the rest of it. All right, I want to talk a little bit about some of the pending bills. I hit one of the most important ones here. Uh, and, and I suggest the ones that are supported by firearm rights groups that have a chance of being enacted. The ones that the firearm rights groups support that have little or no chance of being enacted. And the ones that firearm rights groups are opposing. And there's, there's, there's a few, and I can go into some of the other ones that are kind of pending or follow up in various committees. We can talk about who supports them. Because the ones that are really disconcerting are things like the purple, which might have some, some bipartisan support. That's why it's such a big threat. That's why we're covering it here. Because if you've got, uh, even if it's a sponsor by Democrats, you have to have some Republican support because they're the, not respectful of firearm rights, and they don't know how upset you are about it. They could very well be enacted, but whatever we have, just to So let's talk about House Bill 4434, sponsored by Representative Paul. It's called the CPL Mitigation Bill. Uh, currently, those with an expired CPL, and I went around a little bit and asked who had it, still get the license to the mission. There's quite a few here. Those with an expired CPL under this bill will be treated the same as those. Uh, I'm sorry, not under the bill. Currently, those who have an expired CPL, you have a CPL that expires on your birthday, the next day you're treated as if you've never had a CPL. And that you had no intention of ever having a CPL. You're treated exactly the same as someone else's who is still in a firearm and has never been licensed. Has no intention to do it. The, the CPL. Oh. Uh, what is the penalty for someone who's carrying a concealed pistol and is um, has an expired CPL license by one day? Anyone know? Five year felony. Now come on, guys. We know that if you just forgot to renew your CPL, you slipped off your calendar, you weren't paying attention. We know that the police agencies and the prosecutor's offices and the courts, they're not going to prosecute you for a five-year felony, right? We know that. Yeah, there's already been several instances, the most recent one in Washington County, the gentleman had an expired CPL five days. He's being prosecuted for a five-year felony. And he's going to eat because there is no defense because it was expired. The CPL mitigation bill would leave open a one-year window. So if you get pulled over and you don't have your CPL, uh, it's a, it's a, it would turn into a civil infraction, infraction of $100 if you then go and renew your CPL and you're el you were eligible to have one at the time that you were caught and not having. So it's a one-year window. Now, there was testimony that was offered by a representative of Mother's, uh, Mother's Demand Action. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, uh, Michael Moomer group, Mom's Demand Action, they came in and gave testimony, and they opposed this bill. They think that if you have a CPL, you should be held to a higher standard and she, the person who testified said that she had no problem whatsoever with a five-year felony for failure to make a payment of a renewal. Those are the types of people that you are dealing with on the other side of this issue. If you are a firearm owner and you have a ball to carry one in public, in a concealed manner or otherwise, you are deserving of no mercy. If you don't comply, the end of the terms of the CPL statute. That's House Bill 4434. Every firearm rights group is supporting that bill. House Bill 4331, sponsored by Representative Bo LaFave. If Bo LaFave is on the bill, you should support it. Bo's uh, on our side. Uh, is anyone here a hunter? Uh, hunters, uh, what happens if you're hunting 
and uh, taking gain here as your pickup truck, you're putting your gear away, your firearm is unloaded, and it's leaning against your vehicle. Anybody know what happens? Is that Jim McCoskey knows. A one-year misdemeanor. A one-year misdemeanor for having an unloaded firearm leaning against the bumper of your car while you're putting everything away. That is true. Uh, long guns in vehicles on private property is, is the subject matter of that bill. Uh, currently, one can hear a local pistol in a vehicle on a property without any permit whatsoever. But they can do so much as rest and unloaded gun against the vehicle regardless of any licensing. Uh, that's, that's an unreasonable thing. And it's crazy, right? That may be, that may be. Yeah, yeah. So we're trying to get some common sense in there. Now there's another bill, we call this one that the gun rights group support, but probably doesn't have a chance of passing. But why, why would we support something that has no chance of passing? Because it ferrets out those individuals that maybe pose themselves as supporters of Second Amendment rights. But when it really comes down to it, they're not going to. If you put a bill out there like that, you can find out who those people are, and you can get them out of office. House Bill 4770 is sponsored by Representatives Johnson, Riley, Botanga, Maddox, and Horford. That's a common carry bill, constitutional carry. Gives another option other than having this little pistol license that you can possess. Let's talk about some things that need to be uh, opposed. We we'll talk about the ergos. Let's go over to some of the other bills. And I don't know. Okay. We have a list of the bills. There's a couple on there that uh, didn't make my list because we don't have that. We're going to talk about the ones that are kind of uh, out there. Currently, there is Republican control in the House of the Judiciary Committee and the uh, Military Veterans Affairs Committee and the Government Operations Committee. It's getting to be razor thin. And with the upcoming elections, if you're not supporting people that are paying attention to your rights, it very easy to slip away. There's a representative here, he introduced himself to me as the last Republican in the House or the Senate from Maine County. That's bad news. I'm an old county. We're going communist too. So we talked about Urkels. Let's talk for a second about uh, something that Mike is uh, concerned about. This is what you There's uh, a whole wall of guns you can rent in front of the range here so you can figure out, you know, if I want a new gun, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to buy something and then take it home and go shoot with it and find out it's a, not something that fits my hand or doesn't shoot. I want to rent a gun. Anyone here ever rented a gun? Ever rented a gun? Hot run. Recommended. This would require a next check for anybody who wants to rent a firearm in the range. Comes down with a $500 fine to do a next check. The problem is the next is to set up to do those types of checks. As a matter of fact, it's probably not even uh, uh, within the regulatory requirements for doing this. I don't know how I haven't felt to do it. But the state doesn't care. Yeah. Just say, go do it. Go do it. Okay, every time you became our cousin. Obviously, water goes that. Bill 5095, sponsored by Cynthia Johnson. This would levy a 10% tax on all firearms and ammunition. I got news, you're already paying uh, two taxes when you buy the firearms and ammunition. You pay a federal excise tax. This one's ammunition, and you pay a sales tax. This way, add another 10 percent because you're firearm owners. You're, you deserve to be needed, and you pay for the uh, for your rights. And the money's not going to the roads. 
House Bill 5190. This will be in three D printed firearms. Yeah. Let's see whatever prints are on. No. I mean, I would, I would suspect. I'm guessing anyone here a, a firearm enthusiast, maybe an old firearm.
somewhere between one and a half, maybe three million dollars a year to administer all the programs to hire all the people. Jared Coyne is in the back of the room here. Jared, raise your hand. 
legislative director in the open period. Tom Lambert, the other chair. Jerry comes up to Lansing to testify. So I've been with him in the Attorney General's office, the prior Attorney General. Uh, uh, arguing uh, specific issues trying to get Attorney General kind of opinion written. We've gone in front of the legislature and testified in front of the legislature. Nobody's getting paid to do this. But you can support Michigan Open Security. You can support Michigan gun owners. You can support these state rights organizations just like you might support the NRA or GOA. And these are the people that are at the tip of the spear on the state legislature. I think we're trying to get things done. All right, we have some time for some questions. We good?
how, how do I find out about these bills? There's a couple different sources. You don't have to subscribe to a service to get it done either. Right? So when you go on the Michigan Open Ferry website, they have a list of legislative uh, bills that are out there. In addition to that, you go on uh, legislature.mi.gov, or whatever it is, and just put in Michigan Legislature. And you can search bills for a term like weapons, because almost all of these bills involve weapons. So you put in that search term, and you'll come up with a list of probably 60 bills. That list is on the sheet that might get uh, printed up for everybody. So you can see what it is. And you can read them. I got the titles there. It's not rocket science. And it tells you who the legislators are that are supporting the bill. Here's the universal background check bill. I printed it out. It took me about two minutes to go online to the legislature website. I'll get it to 275. Introduced by Representatives Whitford, Goldie, Randall Carter, Jackson Bird, all the rest of the, uh, the usual suspects. Find out who your legislator is by going on the legislature website and then find out where they land on these bills. Are they a sponsor of this bill? Let them know how you do it. Do they not sponsor the bill? Let them know how you do it. Let your legislator know. You've got to listen to those things. Well, you know, it carries a little more weight if you're in your district and you're actually a uh, 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 constituent. All right, we're going to do more today. Let me know you live with me. They're not doing anything with that information. You know, I mean, like, who knows? Maybe if you get your report done, you call in and you, uh, you said you you're not going to support it, you're not going to vote for it. The next time uh, you know, there's an election with their names on the ballot because they supported the Urkel bill, and you don't think that's a threat. Take away your senator points. You know. Poor Jim Kowski didn't get to speak and had his firearm malfunction in 20 or 30 times on the range. He's a bad ammo. Got to, got to purchase the ammo for guys out there. Any other questions? No other questions? Are you good? I just want to throw something else out there. I think I have everybody sitting in the chairs. If you have a single missile license, the first thing you have to do is you're carrying. When you're stopped by a police officer, you have to disclose that you're carrying. I do have stickers. If you're in the field, you go out the back with your driver's license. That won't happen as a person holds your Because the first thing you do when you pull over, Thank you.